Hi, and welcome to episode 112 of The Expansive. Thank you for tuning in and spending some time with us today. My name is Eric Kruger. I'm a keynote speaker, executive coach, and author. I write books and share high-impact ideas to help leaders just like you become formidable in the face of uncertainty. I'm joined, of course, by my ever-elegant co-host, uh, situated in Thailand, I think, at the moment, future strategist, keynote speaker, and author, Mr. John Sane. And if you don't already know, John helps people, businesses, and global brands to build the courage and clarity they need to forge the future. We've got a really incredible theme for you today, and I can't wait to dive into it. But before we do that, John, uh, how's island life treating you? Are you an island boy? Hey, hey man, what you talking about, <laughs> man? Here I'm in Jamaica, Thailand. No, no. Um, yeah, I'm in Thailand. It's really great. I've been working nonstop since I got here, so I don't, I don't feel like I'm an island boy at all. Um, which is funny because, you know, my, all, all my teams work in South Africa. So um, up until 2.30 or 2 o'clock, everybody's sleeping, right? So mm. I'm doing all the work. And then all of a sudden, everybody comes online and I'm in meetings all the way until 8. It's like I'm actually working harder than I've ever done sitting here on the coast <laughs> week. Um, but yeah, all good. Thank you. Uh, this is what the lifestyle I chose to develop many years ago called a workation. So I've been going through a couple of swims in the ocean, which is just absolutely beautiful here. As you would know, it's tropical and, and warm, and, uh, but doing work as well at the same time. So great, uh, great combination. How is everything going? And, uh, I, I, I want to thank you for arrived. putting on some clothes for, uh, for the, the call. <laughs> yesterday, you know what happened? <laughs> is I, was, I came back. It was so hot yesterday. Today is a bit cooler. You're lucky because I would have had my shirt off. But <laughs> it was so hot. And then I was going into a Zoom meeting and I thought to myself, I can't, I can't be bothered to put a shirt on. It's just too hot, you know? And then I went on and I just made sure that my neck was showing. And then all of a sudden the camera <laughs> fell. I was like, and people started laughing in the meeting. So I thought, ah, you know what it is. I'm, I'm here barefoot and shirtless. It was it just an internal meeting or was it with the client? I just want to know the level of like gutsiness here. No, no, I was the boss in the meeting. Uh, okay. but it was me. It was my team. It was my team. Um, with a client, it depends which client, um, but most probably not. I'm most probably wearing a shirt in every, every one of those. How's okay, everything good, good. Good. All good? Yeah, yeah, all good. Um, I won my first uh, squash league game yesterday. So, like, I'm a full-on, like, squash, not only player, but, like, victor. So, um, that feels good. And who, who did you play? Did, did they have fight? I mean, uh, did they see? And then who, who, did, who did you beat? <laughs> quite funny because uh, Yaku said the same thing this morning. <laughs> Listen, I'm actually quite a decent squash player or developing into a decent squash player, but we'll leave it there. Yes. I'll, I'll take it. Good. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, no, otherwise, uh, things are going well. Just um, prepping for the book launch. Obviously, like April is just a, a kind of a dead month here. So like, mm -hmm. you know, what do you do? Um, mm -hmm. But I think we know by now as well that when you kind of hit that sort of winter spell or like a, a, a slower spell, it's all about preparation for the next wave. So that's kind of where my mm. head is at, is how am I uh, preparing myself for when May comes around and it's going to be busy mm. and big. So yeah, that's Wonderful. Kind of what's happening. I'm here. looking mm. forward to your book launch. I'm mm. looking forward to your book launches. I'll be at them. So looking forward to them. So brother, today we are speaking about feedback. And um, yes. the reason that I wanted us to have a chat about this is because earlier in the week, I had a conversation with someone around uh, some of my personal brand stuff. And it was just such a useful conversation. Like I just, I came away from that being amazed at uh, the insight generated from that call because we become so blind to our own patterns. We become so, mm. like we are so in the thick of it that we don't see what's happening around us. And mm. One of the best ways to then kind of break the cycle or break free from that complacency is that you have to get other people to look at what you are looking at and give you their version of it, give you their perspective on it. And it was fascinating to me because I'm, I'm someone who is very intentional with the way I go about building my brand, like my, with my website, Instagram, all those kind of touch points. However, over time, like you are just continuously adding and adding and adding to the things that you are doing, but you forget what it is like to look at your brand for the first time or what it is for someone who is completely on the outside of, of your brand to look in and go, oh, well, um, what is it they do? Or like, where do I go from here? Or like, so it was just, it was really useful for me to have this very objective opinion on the things that I've been doing. 
it showed me how blind I've become in looking at my own brand. And I thought it might be a good conversation for us to have around feedback, how we go about getting feedback and how maybe we even go about giving feedback. Um, what are your thoughts on that? You know, it's, uh, I used to run restaurants in my 20s and we used to call this term shop blindness. Mm. And shop blindness was when that one light bulb went out and you kind of saw it every day and then eventually you'd forget that the light bulb had gone out or there was a crack yeah. in the window or something in the shop that was so obvious to somebody else that because you were so deep in the operations of your business, you didn't really see it. Mm. And I think this happens to everybody at every touch point of our lives, everything from fitness to uh, business to brand to career moves to whatever the case may be. You know? And I think it's really important to realize that we can never fix something from inside the bottle. We always have to be given that sort of direction from outside the bottle. And it's like, what's that saying? You can't read the label from inside the bottle. You can only read the label from outside. And I think this objectivity um, that can come from somebody with fresh eyes has two sides to it for me. You know, the one side is, are people projecting their own stuff onto my brand or in, onto my world? Um, and is it coming from a place of expertise or a place of wanting to improve me or break me down? And, you know, mm -hmm. the most classic one is that, you know, you, you work with something like a many, many, many years ago, I, I had an agency and we used to work on branding and colors and you know, rebranding businesses and that sort of thing. And we would work for hours, if not days, if not weeks on choosing colors and all those sorts of things. And then the, the person that we did the work with would say, you know, I showed it to my daughter and she doesn't think the purple works. And you're like, dude, <laughs> maybe she had a bad experience with purple <laughs> when she was eight years old and now she doesn't like purple. And now all of a sudden purple doesn't mean, so it also has to come from a place of um, expertise, speciality, and really wanting to improve the space that uh, you're working in. And mm. so I think it's also important for us to realize that objectivity is an amazing thing to invite into our lives, but also who we starting to take that advice from also matters a lot. So yes, mm. I like the topic and I'm looking forward to seeing what you've got to say as well to unpack it further. Yeah, so um, I think one of the best ways to break it down is to break it down into like um, the receiving of feedback and the giving of feedback, All right? So if we yeah. start at, at the receiving side of it, um, I feel like I often watch shows like MasterChef, uh, like I'm, I'm a huge actually i'm a massive fan of master chef um there's so Me much too. to learn from how people so work much, in those so kitchens yeah yeah and even the often, filmmaking even the way they the, film it is just yeah. masterful listen and um i don't know if you saw but there was a local version that just came out and i was so excited for it and i was blown away by the production i thought the production was even better than the the australian wow. version but then the rest just all fell flat but that's a that's another like podcast topic okay. for another day. Okay. But, okay. but I, you've seen the Zen before. Like what often happens is that you, you have a chef, they're busy building something. You have this like expert, this person who's like written the book on the topic that comes around and says, hey, maybe like do less of this or maybe like uh, try something else here. And then you get one of two responses. You get someone who goes, yes, like that makes total sense. Let me like think about it. Let me learn from the process. Or you go someone who goes like, no, I'll just stay in my lane. And I feel like that, that very often happens. And um, the, the problem is that people don't have the self-awareness to know when they need to learn from a situation versus um, when their ego kicks in and they just feel like this feedback kind of personally attacks me, right? And it's, it's so difficult for me to, to watch that like when you're seeing it online or, or um, on TV. It's like, you have this incredible person giving you some guidance and you are just too in your own head to hear what they are saying. And like, if you just take their advice, like imagine what you could do and what you could become down the line. But our ego kicks in and it becomes very difficult for us to learn in that situation because um, receiving feedback means there's a part of you that isn't doing perhaps good enough or that could be improving. And it, it's hard to take that on, especially if you feel like you're already at a certain level. So one of the first things that we need to get right if we want to uh, receive feedback is we need to let go of ego. We need to let go of our, um, 
this idea we have in our minds of us being infallible? Yeah, I think that letting go of ego is like, I mean, isn't that the age old teachings all the way back from Buddha? Yeah. It's a very tough thing to do, you know? And I, and I think that when you are masterful in what you do, you start to realize that you're continuously learning. If you're on the way to really achieving and accessing your genius, you want to confirm to yourself that you're doing it right continuously so that you can have a sort of brave face in your expertise. And so when people call themselves experts online, I'm always like a little bit surprised because you can never call yourself an expert. Somebody else can call you an expert. Right? And then what I see is I see somebody young trying to prove to the world that they are an expert. And so for me, it's about the stage of evolution that you're in, in that specific topic. And if you are far down the line, you take on suggestions really well. You take on, um, like, you know, criticism pretty well. But in saying that, it really depends where it's coming from, you know? Some people just want to break it. I remember, I don't know why I keep thinking of this. I was doing one of my book launches many years ago. And a lady came to me afterwards and she said, do you know that your smile in your book is insincere? What? That, excuse what? Me? Yeah. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, when only one side of your face is smiling and the other isn't, it means you're insincere. And I said to her, can we just stop for a second? You've just watched my book launch. You're here at my book launch and you've got, you just said, this is the only thing you're going to say to me? Not, thank you for the book launch. I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed that. Just this one part, I think it could be better if you had a full smile. You know, I could have received it better. But that's all she wanted to say to me, that my smile was insincere in my book. So, you know, when you get criticism like that, it's almost, it's very important to have your boundaries up. And say, you know what, sod off. Like, <laughs> it is one way to tell me something, and I'm happy to take it on. But it's also really important to realize that somebody projecting their own crap onto you. I did this other talk in Namibia, and it really was received well. And there was a guy in the audience that wasn't looking at me. Like, he kept not looking at me. You know, when somebody's trying to make a point of um, not giving you that sort of energy and attention. And about two days, it was a three-day event. And two days after my talk, he comes to me. First thing he says to me is, you were wrong. I was like, what? Right? Like, what? Like, and he just, he, he broke down one part of my talk that was 90 minutes long. And he told me how wrong I was in that one part. Again, I told him to sod off. <laughs> <laughs> Again, it's really important to understand where the criticism is coming from. So I think, yes, it's good to accept criticism and be grateful in receiving it but also don't stand there and be bulldozed by other people's ideas just because they have them. So I think mm. it's a gray, Eric. I don't think there's a black and white scenario for this, you know? And I think if I can jump quickly into giving criticism, because I think that's where I'm leading this to, it's a yes and, not a no but. And every time I, and look, you, you sent me a PDF yesterday. What did I say? I love this, 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 and this. I would improve this and this. And I'm being truthful because I'm like, mm. I really enjoyed parts of it and parts of it I thought could be better. And that sort of feedback initially, when you arrive back with warmness initially, settle the warmness and make a suggestion of how it could be better and why it could be better. Now that's constructive feedback that is there to help you uplift, not to break you down, not to project my insecurities onto you, not to take away anything from all the hard work that you've done. So I think it's important that you give feedback with a yes and not a no but sort of process. Mm. Yeah, I really like that. And, you know, um, just sticking with the example of like giving feedback um, on the PDF. I didn't ask for it, right? But you, you, volunteer, you yeah. volunteer that information. But yes, I, I think it circles back to uh, your original point about um, I think there are certain people in your life that um, you want them to volunteer feedback. Um, you want mm -hmm. them to, because they have your, your best uh, at heart. Yes. Like they have your, yes. So you always want to hear that kind of feedback from them. And you know that the way it's going to be delivered is going to be in a manner that uplifts you and that isn't going to um, kind of dampen your spirits. So I'm going to come back to the, um, the giving part, I wanted to add one more thing to like when you are asking for feedback 
And that is that mm. you have to be very specific in how you ask for feedback. Um, mm. So let's stick to the book. Now that my book is out, I've been handing it out to people and like my mom got a copy and Dan got a copy. And one of the first things I said to them was like, I don't want you to come back to me and uh, critique the content of the book. Like I'm, it's done, it's printed. I don't want you to come and critique it now. Like uh, if, yeah. you, if you spot a spelling mistake or like anything like that, tell me, cause we can fix that in reprints later on, but I'm not gonna rewrite an entire book right now. So like, don't come and make me feel like, like because of the, the stuff that I wrote in the book, right? Um, so I think very specific requests about feedback and very specific requests about parts of your performance is important. And it also guides people in their thinking about, okay, well, these are the things I need to look out for. Often when I'm giving a, a talk, for example, um, when I get off stage, I'll ask Dan, you know, how was my energy on the talk? Like, I don't want it to necessarily critique everything. Like, I want you to give me feedback on this very specific thing. And it might also be a thing that I'm just actively working on improving. So um, homogenous feedback about every aspect doesn't necessarily help me. Whereas feedback about this one specific thing that I'm trying to get better at, and that I think that you have good insight into, that is very useful to me. Such a smart way to ask for feedback. I, you, I love that. I really do. I think that's so smart. I've never thought of that. And I, I, another way that I look at getting feedback is, could I ask you your advice on something? And it also puts that person into a position where they feel responsible to give you wise advice rather than ask you for feedback in general. It's like, can I ask mm -hmm. you advice on that aspect of this? You know? So like on that part of my talk or that part of my business or that part of my marketing, what do you think I could be doing better there? You know? And, and I think that's really good because it gives somebody a boundary and a focus point to give some feedback on. So mm. really great. Mm, and great. also um, you're allowed to give people feedback on their feedback. So, oh, yeah. you know, you're right. if you think about it, like yeah. we... We you just told good. me didn't ask for feedback. Is that you giving me feedback on my feedback? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that offline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, no, no. So I want to um, give you feedback on your feedback, Eric. Let me give yeah. you some feedback. Stop being in the public, Eric. You know, we've got an audience here. You keep breaking me down here in public. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, there you go. Um, I don't think we we good at giving feedback in general, you know, because, and it's something that's so important to get right. So like whether you're in a um, relationship with your, your, your better half or uh, in a team setup or in a, a partnership, like the expansive, like it doesn't really matter. Like we, we don't give a lot of feedback and therefore we're not good at giving feedback. And I hear horror stories all the time from leaders and managers who give feedback to people in horrific ways. So it's something that we get to practice and it's something that you can ask for is like when you've given feedback to someone, you can like, well, like, how was that? How was that received? Like, you know, did I do a good job here? Like did the message get across? Mm. Um, part of that is you observing the impact that your feedback has. But the other part is also just perhaps, uh, especially in a, a team setup, is formalizing some sort of a, well, how did that go? Like, did, did you receive this in the way it was intended to be delivered? Because that can be, there can be a, a very quick mismatch there. Yeah, you're right. Very good feedback. That's very good feedback, Eric. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I, have, I have one more. I have one more. And that is that, mm -hmm. well, two more. But I'll just run through them very quickly. The first one is, um, we have to be very careful to give feedback when it's not asked for. And this isn't referencing you. <laughs> this, is, this is referencing this is referencing the lady that comes up and says like that picture in your book is like yeah. doesn't make sense right it's insincere That's terrible um yeah. like i think for you to be able to give feedback spontaneously there has to be a relationship that has been formed and you know yes. what the intention is outside of that like when i was playing squash with this dude yesterday and i beat yeah. him like yeah. sure there's inclination to say okay well just do this or this or this he hasn't asked for that. Like who, who knows yeah. what his priorities are, you know, yeah. and who am I to give him feedback in that situation? Like I'm barely better than him. So like, yeah. who am I really to give yeah. feedback there? Yeah. So I think it's important for you to have like a, a solid relationship, a trusting relationship for you to give off the cuff feedback. 
And then the second part that goes with that is then once you give feedback, I don't think it's necessary to sugarcoat it. You know, again, once the relationship is like, let me dial it back. In, in the corporate world, they have this thing called a feedback sandwich. Have you heard of that? No. So the feedback oh, yes, sandwich, yes, 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 yes. I, I tell you something good about yourself, then I tell you something bad, or the feedback I want to give you, it's going to punch you in the gut, and then I tell you something good. Yes, and I yes. think like, it's so juvenile. Like we, we grown ups, like you can deliver the message if you deliver it in the right way. You don't have to sugarcoat it for me. Um, tell me what I need to improve, especially if, if, I, if I want to know how to Look, improve. I think, I think that sandwich can taste good or taste bad depending on the authenticity that it's coming from. Mm. And you know, when I was giving you feedback on your PDF, I was being authentic. I did sandwich it. I did, but I was being really authentic. You know, if you're being mm. inauthentic, then of course you can sense that sandwich, smelly sandwich a mile away. So I don't think the sandwich itself is the problem. I think there's a couple of things. One, authenticity of person getting it. And two, the sensitivity of the person receiving. You also mm. have to be, you also have to be sensitive. You know, if somebody comes from an insecure place, if they have a body issue, if they're female and carry issues around how the world is treated females, you have to play it better because Ultimately, you're not trying to get your say across. You're trying to change your behavior in that person. And so how you deliver that, I think, is of paramount importance because ultimately you're wanting to improve that person or help that person. The way I do it is, may I make a suggestion? The way I've seen something done before, and I saw this, this, and this here. You know, I wrote an email to the CEO of Dubai Futures Foundation, and I went to the Museum of the Future. And I had an experience there. And I said to him, I'd love to share with you some of the ideas I've picked up from the best practices I've seen from around the world that I think could improve the museum of the future. That's, that's mm. how I've done. I was like, look, I've seen X, Y, and Z. I had a great time, but I've seen X, Y, and Z. I'd like to share those practices with you. And then you do what you want with them. So I was very clear that I wanted to add value. I wanted to be objective in adding the value. Tell him that I picked up these things from world leaders in what they've done. And so hopefully it can improve your space. Mm. You know, so I, I think there's a skill to wanting to help authentically, warmly, and really just to be able to engage that person in a place that they don't feel attacked. Mm. And so I don't know if it's the sandwich is the problem. I think it's the authenticity that's the problem. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Um, it feels to me that the sandwich is often just uh, because it's a Practice. formulaic. Yeah. Like I feel like yes, I, yes. I know you're using it on me, and like no. in that way, I'm like, like I think I deserve better than you trying to sandwich it for me. Sure, sure. Having said that, I if, if I think of the feedback that you gave me, I, I didn't, I didn't perceive it as a sandwich, right? I didn't think of it yeah. as like, oh, he's he's buttering me up on this side so he can give me feedback on the other side. Also, it wasn't. Again, it wasn't like breakdown feedback. It was like, these are the things I like. These are the things that might be improved upon. And it's like, yeah, that's good. It's, it's good insight. It's good advice. It's, it's again, like it's an objective outsider's view of, of something that I'm doing. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, I think you actually, you hit the nail on the head. Like it's that, it's that combination of authenticity and really um, having the intention to add value. I think if you can get those two things right in any feedback situation, then you'll be winning. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so. And then also you, you can receive it warmly when it's been given with pure intention, you know? Yeah. It lands yeah. differently. I, you know, so I was having this discussion with my mom. I said something which, which in hindsight I shouldn't have said, but she lambasted me. And I said to her mom, you know, could you not coach me through understanding that process better? Rather than shouting at me or like being dismissive of me, could you not use it as a coaching person? And she stopped mm. and she thought, she said, you know what? I'm sorry, I should have. And next time I will. Mm. And I think even, even in discussion, the way you bring a message across to somebody, trying to get them to think about something differently, is such a nuanced process, you know? I've, I've, I have a friend that's very um, argumentative. And I often have to say, so look, I'm not trying to convince you. You don't have to convince me. I think we're trying to agree with everybody, just like it keeps having another approach to something. And I think the last thing I want to say on this process is everybody has their own truth. You know, 
everybody's truth is their truth. You know, if somebody says that the world is full of racists, guess what? They'll keep continuously bumping into racists. And so what must I criticize their perspective? No. It's like, I don't need to convince you of anything, you know? And stop, stop trying to convince me of your perspective. I appreciate that you have a perspective, and I know that perspective is true for you. It's not true for me. Then explain how I could bring about a more seamless and peaceful truth that wouldn't be so jagged in your experience. And that's the way I've been going about that sort of thing. But to try and think that I know better than somebody or that my way is better than somebody is a fool's game. And so, you know, I put that picture up of Cyril Ramaphosa. I got lambasted with hate mail. And, you know, some people made some really good points. They said, you know, he hasn't done what I expected him to do, but he was handed a lemon. He's surrounded by bad, corrupt politicians. That sort of discussion I can take on because they're objective about it. They're breaking down why they think they could have done a better job. Other people were just disgusting in their approach. And so I just, you know, block those people. I just I stopped engaging with them because they're not coming at it trying to have a discussion. They're trying to come at it to try and demean, understand, mock. And so that's also another way to want to receive advice, you know. So I think it's, it's I think it's such a great topic. And I think it's something that we could talk about for hours. But ultimately, how you're giving and how you're receiving must be based on strong boundaries and authenticity. And when those two things are felt, I think you can have a very robust discussion that ends off friendly and in, in agreement of everybody's truth having their own truth. Yeah, I, I think that's a good place to end it. Um, I think my encouragement we is to go and find the kind of people that can give you that kind of feedback as well um, and be the kind of person that can give that kind of feedback. Um, it's such an important thing for us to harness and to find and to find those people. So um, really make a make it like a mission. Make make sure you you yeah. are actively pursuing that. Uh, brother, thank you so much. It was great chatting to you. Uh, to everyone tuning in today, thank you very much for spending time with us. Um, it's always good to know that we are joining you, whether you are running uh, or on your commute or doing whatever you're doing while listening to podcasts. Who knows? Uh, please take 20 seconds to hit the subscribe button. We'd love for you to join us every single week on this journey. Uh, make sure to leave a rating and review. We have this uh, mission that we are on where we want to have 200 ratings and reviews by the end of the year. Uh, we're doing very well, actually. Thanks to our listeners. We are progressing towards that goal very steadily. So please make sure to leave us a rating and review. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, you can also connect with us on Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, or Facebook. And as always, uh, we'll see you again next week. Thank you for joining in, John. Always good, brother. Popcorn Club from Thailand. Ciao.